Here are 15 incredible tips that you may not know in Stardew Valley and a bonus tip at the end. Enjoy. Fruit trees are not the most profitable crop in the game but they do look amazing on your farm and yeah everyone should be investing in fruit trees at some point. But did you know that your fruit tree can be hit by lightning? When this happens your fruit tree changes. No it isn't dead so don't chop it down. Instead your fruit tree will produce coal for a couple days and then go back to normal. I have seen so many people who panicked and then chopped down their perfectly good fruit tree. Omni geodes are incredible. You can crack them open at Clint to get artifacts and even prismatic shards. You can trade them in for artifact troves and then crack those open for some really good loot. You can even trade them in for desert warp totems that you can then use to get to the desert quicker or you can deconstruct those to create iridium ore. So how do you get tons of omni geodes? It's simple. Complete the danger in the deep quest, grab yourself a burglar ring and eat some monster musk. Then just repeat floor 35 in the dangerous version of the mines. In here you will find these lovely little enemies called carbon ghosts. With the help of the burglar ring each of these are guaranteed to drop two omni geodes each. You will be swimming in geodes in in no time. Have you ever accidentally stumbled onto an infested floor like this and got really annoyed because it is just such a waste of time? Well if the infested floor is right off an elevator floor you can easily farm these for tons of great loot. Infested floors will remain on that floor for the rest of today. Once again use monster mask and a burglar ring and defeat as many of those peasant enemies as you can. You can get tons of slime eggs by doing this plus if you have the dangerous version of the mines active this can help you get a really rare weapon. The Iridium Needle. This might sound absurd but just hear me out, in the early game your inventory is very limited and you will often find yourself having to make very tough decisions but you don't need to. Just drop those items on the floor, on the first floor of the mines and continue on with your adventure. Additionally if your inventory is still full by the end of the day you can leave those items on the floor as long as you don't quit out of the game those items will be there the next day ready for you to pick them up and continue on with your adventure. Food was never really that good in Stardew Valley until the 1.5 update landed and we got access to a special seasoning to increase the potency of buffs obtained from food. Now if you use deluxe fertilizer on your crops and eat a buffed up farmer's lunch you will have a 55% chance to harvest iridium crops. The benefit of this is that these crops sell for way more thereby allowing you to validate selling them without needing to turn them into wine or jelly. This works especially well with sweet gem berries that cannot be processed anyway. The same is true for foraging, if you eat a buffed up tropical curry you will be level 15 foraging. This will allow you to harvest 4 salmon berries at a time. With the help of the botanist profession you will only harvest the best quality salmon berries. But wait there's more, if you reset the day during salmon berry season there will be 50% more bushes with salmon berries on them. You can very easily harvest 500 salmon berries in a single season by taking advantage of all of these methods. This video is sponsored by OnlyFans, drugs, gambling and cigarettes. Hit subscribe to get access to all of these today. Summer is the season of fun right? Well summer is also the season with the most rain. It is guaranteed to rain on both the 13th and 26th of summer. We can use this to our advantage with wheat. That's right just buy a bunch of wheat, plant all of it randomly on your farm and don't even bother watering them. Throughout the rest of summer it should rain at least 4 times. That is enough to cause your wheat to fully mature and be ready for harvesting. This is basically free money with zero effort. Why wouldn't you do this? Enchantments are amazing until you enchant your weapon and get the haymaker enchantment. Ew, gross. Luckily if we get a garbage enchantment we can just reset the day, right? Well, kind of. If you try and enchant the same weapon you will get the same enchantment unless you first enchant any other tool and then enchant the weapon. Yeah, this method is not perfect but it can definitely help save you some prismatic shards if you get something terrible. Use the Stardew Valley Predictor website to make this whole tedious process much easier. Iridium fish are cool, right? They sell for more, give more energy, make better gifts and you can even use 9 iridium quality chubs to get first place at the annual Stardew Valley Fair. But to get an Iridium quality fish you will need to land a perfect catch. This is not impossible but it can be difficult especially for harder fish. Fortunately this is where the quality fishing bobber comes in. If you are at a high fishing level like 15 for example the fishing tackle will guarantee that every fish you catch is Iridium quality. It even works on legendary fish. You could catch a legendary fish using this and then lie to your friends and make them think that you got a perfect catch on a legendary fish. 
Dying in Stardew Valley is very punishing, you can lose tons of valuable items and even your favourite weapon. We all need to avoid dying, of course you could just be a god gamer and outplay your enemies but that takes concentration and effort, this is where some of the best defensive rings comes in. Grab yourself a ring of Yoba and combine it with a crab shell ring, then combine a phoenix ring with another crab shell ring, wear your best boots and eat a crab cake. You will take much less damage from enemies due to your very high defensive stat but you will also become completely immune to damage when your ring of Yoba activates, giving you plenty of time to get your bearings and eat some food. Additionally, if something terrible were to happen and you were to die, well, the phoenix ring will revive you once per day, giving you a second chance. This combo is great for those of you who suck at the game and dislike the combat aspects of Stardew Valley. Do slimes annoy you? Do you hate it when they hit you and it gives you that annoying slow debuff? Well fear no more because there are three things you can do to never get slowed ever again. First you could stack a bunch of immunity by wearing immunity bands and the mermaid boots. Immunity will reduce the likelihood of receiving a debuff or you could just wear a slime charmer ring but you will need to defeat tons of slimes before you can get this ring. Alternatively you could eat some squid ink ravioli, this will make you completely immune to all debuffs in the game. You should most definitely place flooring on your farm, you can do this really easily by holding down the interact key and just running around with speed buffs. Flooring looks great, it makes your farm look so much better but there is actually a benefit to flooring, if you walk on a placed floor like these your character will actually run ever so slightly faster, it's not much but combine it with various speed buffs and you'll soon see how fast you can run around in this game, you'll miss it otherwise. You need an auto petter, the auto petter will pet your animals for you every single day but that's not all, you can still pet them yourselves, meaning they can effectively be pet twice per day, dramatically increasing the rate at which they gain friendship points. If you went the Jojo route, you can very easily purchase an auto petter from the Jojo Mart, otherwise you should max out all of your luck using Lucky Rings, Ginger Ale and Magic Rock Candy. Then dive into the Skull Cavern with as many staircases as you can get your hands on, use these constantly and find as many treasure floors as you can. The only way to get an auto petter is to get lucky by opening up treasure chests in the skull cavern but if you max out everything you'll have an auto petter in no time. Coconuts, you need coconuts, as many of them as you can get, you will randomly find coconuts in the desert every now and then and you can also shake trees on ginger island to get a few but there is a more reliable way to get these suckers. You can head on over to Sandy's Oasis every single Monday to buy 10 coconuts, you should be doing this, stockpile as many of these as you can. Why? Because you can trade coconuts in at the island trader for golden coconuts, that's right and what exactly do golden coconuts contain? Well firstly they contain a bunch of garbage but they also give you tree saplings. More specifically the most profitable fruit tree sapling in the game, the mighty banana. And if you plant these on your ginger island farm, they will produce bananas every single day no matter the season. If you are somewhat new to the game, you might find fishing hard, especially when you are trying to catch those pesky sturgeons. But we need them, we need a sturgeon to complete the community center. And we also need sturgeons to get caviar that is required to complete the missing bundle and unlock the cinema. But what if, no matter how hard you try, you just cannot seem to catch them. Well, Krobus has your back, he sells a random fish every Wednesday so you could visit him every single Wednesday and check if he has sturgeons for sale. If he does, grab them, problem solved. If you picked a male, you cannot enter the girls changing room. Or can you? Enter the spa, go to the other entrance, keep trying, the game will stop you but keep trying. Eventually you will get through into the girls changing room, you weirdo. You may have already known all of these tips but I guarantee you don't know all of these 21 mistakes in this video, watch it immediately to ensure your playthrough goes perfectly fine. Thanks for watching but for now, I will see you in the next video.